everybody. This is Joe from What I'm Playing Now, and we are revisiting the Seventh Continent. Uh, last week, when we were going through our normal Saturday stream, made a couple rules mistakes. Well, made one big rule mistake, and it came down to the food. I had stacked a couple of pieces of food, and when I was activating that stack of cards, I was activating each card um, at one time, which you're not supposed to do when you are activating cards. Each white symbol on the card is its own activation. So in that stack of food, instead of getting double the amount of food, I was supposed to get about half the food that I had actually gotten. And I kind of knew that was wrong last week. I kind of said when I was um, actually doing it, I said I was making a house roll and I was like, I kind of just wanted to see more of the island. So rather than continue with a part three of the series and continue on from where we were, I kind of wiped the board clean. I really hadn't mapped out that final part of the island that I had done. So hopefully with my memory being what it is, I don't remember too, too much from it. Although it was really nice to actually get kind of further in the game. Um, but we're going to restart again from the beginning. And I said, we're going to be playing this for a couple of weeks, probably for about, you know, maybe three or four weeks. And I was going to see if I can actually get through um, one of the curses um, from playing this. So I've done two sessions so far. There were probably about four hours, four and a half hours, but probably that good last half hour to 45 minutes of the last session, probably I should have been dead because I should have run out of cards. Um, but um, I kind of just wanted to extend it a little bit and actually see um, a little bit more of the seventh continent. So this is what we're revisiting today. We are making another pass at um, playing through some more seventh continent. Um, Kind of doing these solo streams just because I, I really want to play some of these kind of solo, more solo style games that I have that I really don't get to get to the table too often. So this is kind of an excuse for me to one get to the get some of these games to the table, play through them, and uh, and and do a stream as well. We're gonna start up some of the music for the Seventh Continent, and we're kind of just gonna jump right into things here. I've done a couple of videos for the Seventh Continent before in the past. And I've explained most of the rules. It, at its very highest level, Seventh Continent is a choose-your-own-adventure style game where you are basically exploring cards like the one that I have here in front of me. And I've tried to, last time I tried to change the camera around a little bit where I was zoomed in. I don't want to zoom in too much more because I don't want to cut off too much of the board. Um, so that's about as far as I'm going to be able to get zoomed in. So you're not going to be able to read the cards. You will be able to see um, what some of them look like. Uh, and this... This video, uh, for those who may not be familiar with the game, if you're thinking about getting the Seventh Continent, this will contain spoilers. Also, as always, like I tell everybody, turn on the Klingon subtitles, because if I do make any sort of rules mistakes like I did last week, I will definitely put those into um, the section and um, comment on that and, and let everybody know that that is kind of what happened. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to jump right into this, and I'm since we're starting off, I'm going to kind of reread everything from the beginning, just like if we were doing a, um, a brand new start of a game. So hopefully audio and everything's working. I haven't seen anybody mention anything in chat yet. So if you are in chat, stop and say hi, please. And um, let me know if you've ever played The Seventh Continent and what you think of it. But we are going to jump right into things and start playing. The Seventh Continent. Um, I'm putting the title one, this one, as revisiting since the last one was exploring the Seventh Continent. We're now revisiting it since this is kind of like our second playthrough. Well, more like our third playthrough because I did these months ago. Um, but this is the second time we're actually trying this during this new run of videos that I'm putting together. So we're going to start off by reading um, what you're supposed to read before you start off for a new adventure. And that is, uh, it's 1907, a renowned explorer. You have just come back from the first expedition on the Seventh Continent, a mysterious land that was recently discovered off the coast of Antarctica and probably the very last terra incognita in the world. You are recovering from your adventure when, whilst reading the daily newspaper, you realize that several other members of the expedition has disappeared suddenly for unknown reasons. Uh, coincidentally, you have been lethargic for a few days, feeling feverish and finding it difficult to get up from bed. A cold shiver runs up and down your spine. You have to face the facts, and evil is consuming you from within. At nightfall, you fall into a sleepless rest or a restless sleep without knowing that for you, this is only the beginning. 
The Seventh Continent is, like I said, is a choose your own adventure style game. And the basis of the game is you come back from exploring the Seventh Continent, you are cursed, and you're trying to lift the curse that has been um, bestowed upon you from when you were on the Seventh Continent. The curse that we're actually playing through today, and the only one we've actually ever played through and have yet to actually flip and finish, is the Voracious Goddess. And the Voracious Goddess basically states, since you returned from that expedition, the vision of a strange, gloomy idol that seems to be calling you has been haunting your nights. The piercing cries of a few seagulls pull you out of a deep slumber. They sound so strange as though they were laughing. You try your best to understand where on earth are you. How did you end up in this place? Your memories are clouded and you seem unable to remember. While sifting through your journal, you come across a handwritten sheet upon which something that looks like a route was drawn along with several statues. As it so happens, one of the statues looks exactly like the idol from your restless dreams. And to begin this adventure, we need to pull out card 010, which is the 10 card, which is what I have um, sitting right there. And our, I'll give you a quick close-up of what the map looks like. This is what the map looks like on the Voracious Goddess card. Uh, so I'm supposed to basically try to decipher uh, what path I'm supposed to take on this island and how I'm supposed to get to, I guess, where the X is. There is some text on here, which even with my handy-dandy magnifying glass that they give you, I have never really been able to read. And I can't ever remember if I looked it up on um, the internet as to what it actually does say there. I'm going to set my fire icon off to the side. I'm going to set my actual character right there in front of this island before we get ready to flip it over. I am currently playing as HP Lovecraft. Um, he's pretty much, I think, the only character I've actually ever played this game as. Um, and I I really do enjoy playing as HP Lovecraft. Um, I think he's a pretty good character to play for in this game. Um, he did pretty good for me last time solo. I learned quite a bit and did several things that I had not done in some previous playthroughs in the game, which I think let me get uh, a little further than I really had. But let's go ahead and start playing and jump in here. Thick columns of yellowish smoke rise up from the cracks in the volcanic rock to the east. The peaks of a rocky cliff look down, mocking the ocean below. So this is the card we're actually going to start off at. So we're putting this at D4. And I kind of did D4 as a start here um, before. And I'm, I'm going to try to expand a little bit on my notes here in my cartographer's notebook that I have here and maybe try to take maybe a little bit better notes than I did the last time. Like I said, the last time I really didn't um, do too much when I had gotten to that last section of the land. Uh, but this time we're actually going to try. Um, so what I need is I need two number one cards here, um, which are kind of our unexplored fog of war style of cards. I'm going to shuffle these up from the last time I played, just to give these a little bit of shuffle. I do have sleeves on my cards, so that is something that makes, I think, shuffling these a little bit easier. And um, the stack of skill cards over here to my left, and these cards are cards you definitely will be utilizing a lot. Um, so I wanted to try to keep this game in as good a condition as I can. And I'm going to take a little drink of water. Uh, the discard pile, I will say a little bit about the discard pile because I don't know if I've really talked about it too, too much. The discard pile is where you're going to discard all of your cards. Um, there are two sides to the discard pile. And you kind of get to choose what action you want to be able to take. I'm playing on the side that will actually let me discard will cards from my inventory and actually let me take two cards back from the discard pile and shuffle them back in the action deck. Uh, this action deck that I have sitting over here, which contains mostly skill cards, some items and stuff like that, as well as a few curse cards and uh, a few other things, um, is pretty much my life for the game. This is kind of like the timer. So when this deck runs out and actually ends up filling, um, being all in the discard pile there, I will then at that time flip those cards over because you put them there face up. I'll flip them face down at that time, shuffle those up, and every time I go to draw from there, if I do hit a curse card, the game's over and I do end. So what we're trying to do is keep this deck as as large as we can, try to utilize as few of these cards as possible when we're doing different challenges throughout the game to do the different actions and explore as much as we can. Um, I don't know if I'll finish it on this run. This could be one of these runs where we get lucky and we make it through things, or you know maybe it's gonna take one more after this. Who knows? We will see. Uh, so let's get started. 
So one of the first things I like to do is actually do the action for Pathfinder Escape, um, which will let me flip these over. Since these cards are random, they can be different every time. Let's go ahead and do the top card here. It doesn't cost us any action cards to do that, and we don't have to worry about any sort of successes with the stars because it is a zero zero card. So this is kind of a free action. And the first thing we actually find is a life jacket, um, which normally doesn't happen to me this early, but I will take that as maybe a good sign for this game. So the life jacket actually is an item, and I can tell that by the die that's in the upper right hand corner there. It has a four there. So I know that this life jacket has four uses to it. Um, you have laid your hands on a life jacket. It's in poor condition, uh, but it's still gonna be usable for a couple of things. And it will allow me to do some, get some bonuses for some different actions. Either the swim action, the swim or sail action, I think it is, or the rest action. Um, and then the other one is also the swim or sail action or the uh, fight action, I believe that is. So we're gonna set that right in front of us as one of our items. We're, since we're playing a solo game, we have our satchel and journal card here. Since we're playing a solo game, we're allowed to have um, five blue or four blue card or five blue cards, four green cards, four items, and our item stacks can go four deep. So let's set that back over there off to the side and see what we're going to do next. Obviously, the next thing we need to do is pull out an 07 card, which is going to go right there to fill in that card that we actually just, just removed. Uh, further to the north, the terrain slopes steadily down to the water. So we've been there before. We know that there's a slope down to the water. Uh, there was a body with a monster there the last time, so that's pretty much going to be there again. Um, we did find some loot, some food, and some gear there. So probably that might not be a bad place to go and hopefully find some food again. But I remember fighting that monster. Um, it is definitely very difficult. I think to kill him, there were many stars that you had to get. Um, so that's something I, I definitely need to keep in mind if I don't have a weapon. That life jacket uh, lets me reduce three from the attack cost, but then I have to banish that item. So I probably don't want to use that right away as, as a weapon. Uh, because I think I'd rather definitely use that with uh, the swim action if I ever need to utilize it there. All right, so we're going to do the Pathfind Explore action over here to the side, or Pathfind Escape. Oh, and we actually got a green card. Um, Habits and Customs, thinking back on the last few days uh, before you left the expedition, you remember your excitement at the prospect of all the discoveries you dreamed of making. If players have three or more cards with the keyword fetish, take a 420 card and banish this. Um, I don't, I haven't seen too, too many cards with the actual keyword fetish. Thanks, Kimmy, for letting me know that everything sounds and looks good. Appreciate that. Um, I haven't seen too, too many cards with the keyword fetish. We're going to set that card off to the side. Probably not worry about that one too much. I will hopefully remember that if I do see a couple of cards with the keyword fetish there. Um, but the next thing we need to do is grab the 009 card to go out over here. And this is basically what you're going to be doing. You're going to be kind of building the map, as you can see here, as what we're doing. Um, over here to our, what I believe would be our west. Um, since I'm upside down, if I was looking at it from your point of view, this I believe would be my west, and I think that would be my east. We'll try to say that and maybe keep that right. Um, but over here where we're going to put the 009 card, um, the ground is totally barren here. In fact, the only vegetation among you, your surroundings are clumps of red seaweed clinging to the rocks. Plumes of yellow smoke spurt from the ground from time to time swirling around a dead seagull. Uh, so we know from the last time that that um, may be a good place to go because I think this is where we basically kind of unlock being able to utilize seaweed uh, in some of the crafting type of um, actions that we're going to try to make. All right, so we have two cards exposed right now. Um, what are we going to do first? I think before we actually do a movement, since movement on here is going to cost us one, and you're always looking at where you're moving from, um, not where you're moving to, um, is going to be your movement cost. Let's make sure we're done with this card before we want to move on, and I believe we have an action over here that is going to be the go see or investigate action, um, which is actually going to cost us a skill card. So we're actually gonna to have to draw a card here. It has zero stars on it. And so that means we really don't have to worry about succeeding or failing if it's a curse. 
Um, that won't hurt us right now, and I'll explain that if that's what I draw. But right now we get the raft. Wow, the life jacket and the raft and a green card as my first three draws. This could be a, a, a god run in this game. We'll see if that happens. Um, this is an, another item, but unlike the other item that I had, this item is actually going to have to be a card that's crafted. So if you see it has the wrench symbol, wrench symbol on there, that means I actually need to take uh, the action of crafting um, to actually build this raft. So this card's actually going to go into my hand, unlike the life jacket, which is um, actually in my inventory, and it's an item that I, I have already created. Uh, it was one that I, I basically just found that. This is more like I found the the recipe or maybe the crafting, you know, instructions, or I remembered how to craft a raft, but I haven't done it yet. So there are some, there, there's stuff that I'm going to have to do to actually craft this and take this action to make the raft. But um, getting the raft this early on in the game, it hopefully will, I think, get us off this part of the island much, much faster and we won't screw around here too, too long. But there are a few things that I do want to pick up. Um, because I see that down to the south over here um, is basically where I um, sailed off. So I think down to the south here, I need to put out a couple more um, one cards here real quick. Let's get those out before we do any other actions and not, not forget this. I think the last time I went down to the south, um, to actually get off the island and with having a raft this fast, we may just do that. So I think right now, since we've just taken this action over here, we do need to draw the 005 card and see what that's going to bring out for us. Uh, you stand before a nearly 50 foot high rocky peak. Uh, the view from up there must be quite interesting. Um, if I want to climb this, I need to um, draw one card. I can draw more. I need two stars and then I can... Um, Put out the 26 card and discard this. And if I fall, I basically will get injured. So this card's going to go over here. Now with this symbol right here, it tells me I can't take this, um, that action anymore, the go see or investigate. So we're kind of done on that card unless I actually do want to do this climb action with without having the rope or any sort of vine or anything. I'm always hesitant upon doing that this early in the game because I really don't want to injure myself. Um, so I think what we're going to do is we're actually going to, um, I think we're probably going to do move north up here because that is where we did find some food. So I think what we might do is over here on our little action of spot or observe is where we do that. And then we have another action to go see or investigate up here as well. So we have a couple of things we're gonna do here. So um, we're gonna take our move action. It is gonna cost us um, uh, one card to move, which we will probably be able to get in our hand, learn by doing. Um, this is a really nice card to have because it actually has a minus three on there for the skill cost. Uh, so that basically lets me know that whenever I'm doing an action, if there's an action that requires me to take uh, like maybe six or seven skill cards, I can use this minus three to actually lower that, especially if not a lot of stars are required. It's definitely something you probably want to do to keep your um, your hit points and your deck of timer over here kind of as, you know, keep it as full as you can. Um, all right, let's do the action over here to go see or investigate. That's going to cost us another card as well. We have the fire making kit which is probably something that would be very good to get built um, as early as possible. So we're getting a lot of very good items here right now uh, that I think we're really going to utilize. And if I can maybe get back over here to where that um, seaweed is, we may be able to craft the raft for just about free um, if we don't have to use that learn by doing card earlier than that. So we can have five blue cards. We only have three in our hand right now, so I'm not going to worry about crafting anything right now. Um, but we do need to get the 18 card out and see where that, what goes there. Let's jump back over to this stack of cards. And 
you have reached the northern end of the island. You have no idea how much time it would take to reach an area with more abundant resources, but one thing is certain, if you stay on this barren slab of rock, you are bound to starve. The many reefs that surround the island would surely wreck any craft trying to approach or leave. However, you might be able to swim through them. The sea is calm right now, but this is not a time to be reckless. Um, that's definitely something we're not even going to screw around with trying to swim off the island. Since we do have a raft, we're going to try to go south and leave the island that way. Um, but before that, I definitely want to come down over here and do our spot or observe action. And that doesn't cost us any sort of card or any stars. And it does let us draw out the 011 card. So as you play through this multiple times, you know, there's going to be some cards that you run into and some things that you've seen before, which I think is one of the reasons why you want to take maybe, you know, kind of good notes over here. I've taken some okay notes. I wouldn't say they're perfect, but it kind of gets me by. Um, there's a man is lying face down among the rocks. Approaching closer, you notice his clothes are torn and tattered and his body is swollen and puffy. Parts of the body are mutilated and the man's skin bulges with what look like large eggs. Um, we can actually do an investigate action on this one, or a search or examine icon on, on this one is um, skill and actually see what it is. And I think we're going to do that, but then I think that's going to trigger, that's going to trigger a fight and we really don't have a weapon as of right now. So I actually may just leave that there. Um, I think there's an item that we get there. I don't know if I'm going to need the item later on or not. But um, not having a weapon handy um, to give me some additional stars, I don't know if I'm really equipped to readily do that. So I think what we're going to do is we're actually going to spend a movement card, a skill movement card, and actually move off of here um, and go back to um, this tile right over here. That is going to cost me a card, which is a club. We just we just drew a weapon, which probably might not be might not be a bad idea to craft this. Um, we are on um, an area with stone. If we can find this and examine this red seaweed, uh, I think that would even lower the cost of this club even more. And having this club would definitely be extremely beneficial. Might not be a bad place to even build fire, so we can move back there uh, later uh, for free. Because if you ever move to a place where there is fire, um, it's minus one movement. So that would allow us to kind of move from a central location pretty much freely um, when you're moving to that back to that space. So I could, would have to pay to move back up here to maybe fight this monster. And then if I was moving back to the fire, it would I would be able to do that for free. So definitely something we're going to have to keep in mind. Um, so let's actually do the do the spot or observe action right here that is going to cost us one card. Well, we have an action here. Well, I have these two cards first, so let's maybe do those first since they are free. The Pathfinder Explorer. I'm actually starting to remember these names I'm playing the game so much. We'll do the Pathfind Explorer, or the Pathfind Escape, I think is what it is. Pathfind Escape action here um, and flip both of these cards over. Let's do one at a time. Let's do this card over here. Spiky Conk. Um, this appears to be another item. It'll both play music and, and can be used as a weapon. Very interesting. Um, aggressiveness music. Oh, aggressiveness. That's kind of a different... Well, I guess aggressiveness is on the club as well. And I wish I kind of had the club already built because I would have put this under the club because um, I'd rather have the club on top of this. Um... But I guess it really doesn't matter, because since they both have the keyword aggressiveness, um, I will get the abilities of both. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and keep that. That's going to go right into our inventory with a three on there. And if I put the club on there, that would actually let me bump that die up to a six, which would give me a significant number of uses, which would basically double the amount of uses I could get with my club. Something that's kind of very important there. All right, so so far, not a bad start to the game, I'd have to say. I don't know if I've ever had that spiky conk in my inventory before. But um, we're getting some pretty, pretty good items here. 
Uh, let's pull out the 015 card since we need to see that next. The terrain is split in two by a small bay. So this one, I would actually have to, to do a movement across this. It's a balance or a jump action. It's gonna cost three skills and you do need one star. Um, so I think I basically skipped doing this the last time I was here on the island and I may do that again. Let's actually see what we have here. We have two items, we have four cards. So whatever it is, um, we should be able to put this in our hand and not worry about it. Uh, spider bite. All right, so this is an action um, that I need to actually deal with immediately. Your calf is itching uncomfortably. Examining it, you notice a nasty red spot. You must have been bitten by a spider. And you can only hope he has it has not laid its eggs under your skin. Only the active player is forced to take the following action. It is a heal action. I believe that is what the, the plus symbol is. It's a cure or heal action. Um, I need to take multiple cards and get two stars. Um, I'm trying to see if I actually have anything that can actually help with the heal action. I don't. So I'm probably going to have to take... Um, take two cards. I don't really think anything happens with the spider bite. Because it doesn't really tell you to... If anything does or not. My, my The two options are the little wound seems to heal nicely... And then the other one is eggs are under your skin. Certainly not possible. And then banish this. So. I'm not really too sure if it matters if you pass this or not. Unless if there's. Unless if actually this card is an error. And there's supposed to be a card that. Where you actually do pick something up from this. I could look real quick on the tablet. And see if that card's on the errata. I don't know if I looked that up the last time we played. Let me actually pull that up super quick since I have um, all of that stuff right over here on the tablet. Just kind of want to make sure on that one. What is this? This is a number one card. I don't remember if I saw anything in here for this the last time. I don't think I looked this one up, but I also don't remember seeing any of the cards in here like this, and I don't. And take a go quick scan at that stuff. So we're just going to just draw one card. I mean, it actually says you can draw zero. So you know what? We're just going to fail it. Eggs are under your skin, certainly not possible. Banish this, and then we're just going to banish the card. I'm not even going to draw any cards and waste anything for it. Since there really didn't seem to be any sort of negatory, negative effect there. Um, but in that case, we do need to draw out the 006 card. There is no smoke here. Some moss and even a few, bam few bamboo light canes grow in this area. So that's good to know. And I'm trying to remember if this... So there's a plant on here, and I've learned about the plants before. And one of these, yep, this is the card with 014 on it. And I talked about this last time. Sometimes they give you this magnifying glass. Sometimes there are some kind of hidden numbers on some of the cards. And if you find them, you can actually draw that card. So instead of actually placing out the 06 card, I can draw the 14 card out. Um, which gives me something a little different. Oh, I had one card out of order there. So here's the 14 card. You frighten a little crab and it scurries into a small hole hidden among the weeds. And it has the 6 card on there, so I know that's correct. This card's going to go into the past. Um, since I don't know if that's supposed to go into the past or actually go back into the box or be returned. I think going into the past, past isn't going to matter. Um, so I think this might be a little place where you might be able to get a little food. Um, which is always definitely a good thing. Yeah, because there's another action on here that wasn't on there previously. This card's going to go here. So one of the first things we probably want to do is, before we continue on, is build our fire. Because uh, that's going to, I think, let us move back up here, then move down, and then if I move down there, um, let us do a couple of different things. So for fire making... 
Well, actually, you know what? Before we do that, let's actually do our spot or observe action here and find out about the red seaweed. This is uh, 034. It is one blue card. We still have an open card yet, so we're definitely still able to draw this. We got our snowshoes. Uh, these may come in handy later. I don't, they're, they're not going to be needed for this particular part of the continent. Um, but last week, I remember going to a section of the continent where snowshoes were needed. Uh, so we definitely kind of want to maybe try to keep that card around if we can. Uh, I think we need to start getting some of these items built and out of our hand um, since we now have a hand of five. But the first thing we need to do is draw the 34 card. And I think learn a little bit about some seaweed here. If I'm rem remembering this correctly. Bright red seaweed is clinging tightly to the rock. Perhaps it is edible. Uh, you tear a piece of the seaweed and give it a taste. As soon as it hits your tongue, it starts to tingle. You spit it out immediately. However, it's flexible and strong. Stem might prove useful. Immediately after this is revealed, you take the 029 card from the adventure deck if available. This is going to go here so we can't do that spot or observe action again. And we need to take the 029 card. Red seaweed. Um, the stem of this red seaweed is both flexible and strong. It could easily be crafted into some nice cordage or as a component in other equipment. Um, when this seaweed can be seen in your terrain card, uh, you have the vine resource, which definitely will come in handy for doing the raft, for building the club, but it does not help us with the fire making kit, which is what we wanted to do next, but that's okay. So there's a lot of cards that actually have seaweed on that over here. So that's always really nice to find very early on in the game, since we know it's there. I think we need to craft a couple of things right now and get a few things out of our hand because I think we're gonna go back here, do this fight, hopefully get some food. I believe we have some food down here, which I need to notate, um, which is below our, um, which is below our 14 card. Okay, I did write down that we have crab in the weeds there. Um, so that's good. There's seaweed and stone below this card. So okay, we have actually all that stuff notated there. Um, so I actually did, did take that bad of notes the last time. We actually did pretty good there. Uh, but I think one of the first things we need to do is fight over here. Because uh, I think that got us some loot, um, food, and gear as well. Uh, before we move, though, we want to put fire here so we can move back here for free. So let's get our fire making kit. That's going to cost us um, two cards. I really don't want to spend... Um, Anything else to do this? Well, I could craft the raft for free right now, which will get two cards out of our hand. Because I do have the learn by doing, which is minus three. And since I'm on, a, on an area where the red seaweed is, we can actually craft the raft um, and get rid of those two cards, which would then free up a card for when I do the fire making kit. Let's do that first. Let's go ahead and craft the raft. Because I can have four items in my inventory and still be okay. Let me move my little stream deck over to the side so I can have a little bit more room with my cards here. Because I, I play with kind of my cards out. I find it a little easier when I do that. So we're going to build the raft. We're going to learn use our learn by doing card which is going to subtract three from the cost. We are on an area where seaweed is. That lets us use the vine resource, which is minus two. That is five um, skill cards. So basically we got the raft for free, which is a very, very nice thing to do. Um, so we need to craft the club next. Is there anywhere where there is stone? There is stone and seaweed here. Crafting the club on this spot might not be a bad place either because I think I would um, be able to craft the club for just one. So we're going to craft a couple of things, I think, right now. The next thing we're going to do is, for two, we're going to do the fire making kit because I want to put fire down on this part of the island. So we have the blowpipe, which is another weapon, as well as dark regeneration, which is actually one of HP Love's crafts. Um, skill cards that is specific just to him. 
As long as I have this in hand, if at least one curse card is revealed during the rest result step of an action you are involved in, you may return any freezing, frightened, hungry, or nauseated or tired states. We're definitely going to keep that and get rid of the blowpipe. And that will craft us the fire making kit, which we're then going to use the fire making kit um, right off the bat. Spend this, this will get discarded, and we will put a fire figure into play. And I want to get these painted. I saw some on one of the websites that had some little fire minis painted, and I just never picked them up. But I kind of wanted to get those, even though I haven't painted the actual minis themselves. They're gray. They might actually stand out a little bit better if I actually have those painted. Um, maybe someday we will get to that. Um, but we got our fire out. Since we are on an area where we have both um, stone and the seaweed, which gives us the vine resource, that's going to be minus two to building a club. And building a club is normally three, so that would only cost us one skill card, which would let us basically keep a skill card, keep the card that we're going to draw, um, which is a curse, which is actually no big deal. Um, we didn't need any stars to craft that. It's kind of just getting this curse card out of the deck, um, which is probably the best time to actually draw that. So we're just going to go ahead and discard that. That doesn't mean we fail at the crafting, because crafting pretty much just succeeds by itself. And as I mentioned the last time, what we're actually going to do with this is, maybe I should put um, my raft over and put the spiky conch over here. Let's move the raft next to the life jacket so those are together. I probably maybe should have stacked those. Because um, those do have, um, well, they do have this this one same word on there. Um, but since this has the aggressiveness skill on there and it's three stars, we're going to go ahead and put the club under here and bump this up to six. So that will actually give us six uses of a club, which I think could be... Uh, extremely powerful. I'm, I'm hoping it is. I'm hoping that's how this is going to work out. All right. We crafted a bunch of stuff. We're back down to two cards in our hand. We have several items. We have life jacket raft, spiky conch with the actual weapon of a club under it. And where are we going to go next? I think we need to move. And so I think we need to move a skill card up here to move back up to here to do this action. So let's go ahead and draw our one card here for movement. The woven basket. I think this is something we definitely are going to want to craft. Um, so as I mentioned before, food is something very, very important. And the, the, the big rules mistake that I made last week, and like I said, I kind of knew I was doing it incorrectly, but I still did it because I wanted to explore more of the island was by stacking the food. This, I think, lets you um, have additional items into the one stack here. So the way this reads is when this item is your inventory, the item is the item it is part of may contain up to three additional item cards. So this is something that's good to have because you can pretty much stack all of your food in this woven basket. Um, and instead of it normally having maybe four uh, slots, it could have up to seven. Um, I've never, ever had that much food before. Uh, but I think that's definitely something, again, that we probably want to craft, especially if we come uh, back down to this part of the island where we have the vine ability from that seaweed that's there. So we did just draw the one skill card for our movement. We're going to move up here. We're then going to go ahead and do the search or examine icon, which is over here on um, this card over here. And we don't have to move over there because of that arrow being there. Uh, but we do need to draw a skill card or an action card and uh, see, see what our skill card and see what happens here. Oh, we got the rope. So we can actually climb, when we're moving, we can actually go back down here and climb if we wanted to, if we wanted to craft the rope. Um, we would probably have to go back here to actually craft it for free, because if you have the vine, you can craft the rope for free. Wow. 
I've never had so many good items so early in the game. I just am kind of floored right now with the cards that I'm pulling. I'm actually kind of nervous to continue playing and seeing what's going to happen here. Um, we're going to go ahead and take the 031 card and then return this. So this is going to go back into the box into the 11 slot since it says return. We need 031. Let's grab 031 first so we make sure we get the right card here. All right, so there's 031. 11 needs to go back. And hello, if you're joining us, say hi. Say if, Let me know if you've actually played through any of the Seventh Continent before. Um, interested to see what some other people's thoughts are on the game. Uh, this is a game that uh, was only available by via Kickstarter. And... Um, they did have a second, I got into the second round of it, so I was very happy that I did. I'm still waiting for some of the expansions. One of the reasons why I'm kind of playing through it is because um, the expansions are actually supposed to be coming, hopefully in the next couple months. So I wanted to see and try to get through several of the base curses of the game. Um, but I'm still on the first one, so I've had hours of fun with the game so far and yet finish anything. Uh, so this is a little different. I don't think we're gonna get attacked because there were multiple 031 cards. And I think I put the one that I had before towards the back when I put them back into the box, which is how I normally put them back in the box. Uh, the waves violently pound the rock, splashing your face with sea spray. Uh, you inch towards the body along the slippery rocks, trying your best not to fall into the water. I have to do a balance or jump action, probably a balance action, to basically manage to keep my balance. Um, if not, a uh, wave's going to come over the embankment, knocking me down, and drenching me to the bone. Uh, so that doesn't sound like it's probably something that would be that good. Uh, so that wasn't really what I was expecting. But I guess we can do the balance action. I really don't have anything that's going to assist with balancing, though. Um, no card that I have offers to me any sort of balance, and the life jacket doesn't even help here. You think the life jacket might would have maybe assisted with um, with the water if I, since I'm wearing it, uh, but it doesn't appear that it does. Uh, for this one, I do need to take at least one card and get three stars. And I'm not really too sure I really want to do that, to be honest. That just doesn't sound, that's going to go through quite a few cards. But I did get some food, I think, the last time out of the body. Oh, boy. Decisions, decisions. I don't have anything with the keyword... Oh, I do have a card with the keyword Serenity. So if I do draw another curse, HP Lovecraft's actual innate ability allows me to discard a card with the keyword serenity on it and use that as a star. Um, but again, like I said, I have to get three stars on this one and I don't have anything that's offering me any sort of balance. And I'm not really too sure I want to spend those cards when I know I have some food available down here. With the few cards that I've actually gone through so far, I don't know if it's actually worth it. I think what we're going to do is we're just going to move back to where the fire is and probably craft the rope. Um, since that's going to be a free action. And possibly try to just maybe get off of this part of the island. So I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to leave the body there. We're not going to worry about the item that we get here. I'm hoping I don't need it later. I think it's utilized, from what I remember from playing before, I think it's utilized on a, a component that's over on part of the island that I'm not even planning on going to. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to take the free action since I have the fire out. It's minus one to movement. This is one movement. I'm going to move back here for free. I'm then going to take the action of constructing the rope since I did find the red seaweed here and there's red seaweed on this card. Um, the vine uh, resource is available to me on this tile. That gives me a minus three to my construction cost, which is going to be a construction of the rope for free with four uses. Now I could put that under the life jacket, 
um, which actually might be something I probably want to do. This way I, I'm leaving myself one um, empty space open possibly for the food or maybe making this woven basket, um, which I can actually craft for one less being here as well. I'm probably thinking that might be the better thing to do. Let's combine. I'm going to lose a little bit of usage here because my life jacket has four, my rope has four, so the max I can go is six. Uh, but I think this is definitely the right thing to do. Since this, they both have the um, keyword of skill on there, I could put the rope there, bump this up to six, and then I'll have six uses between my life jacket and and uh, the rope there. All right. Okay. So my cards are getting a little bit longer. Let's move these up over here so I got a little bit more room. There we go. Um, all right, so we just did that. Craft the rope. What next? Where do I want to go next? I think we might just have to go, go down south and start exploring that piece of the land. I mean, I could move back over here and climb up to the top here. I did that very early on in the game and I really don't think it actually did anything. Um, so I'm, I'm really not too sure I want to waste any more cards. I think I just want to spend the one movement card, go down here, and um, I should have pulled out a card down here when that card first came out. Um, and it looks like I had forgotten to, but no biggie. We just cleared that up. That's going to cost me a card to draw. Lucky star, you may discard this during an action you are involved in in order to apply the following effect, minus two and or seven, which would give me some stars with the sevens, which is good, good, good. I still don't see anything with the keyword kind of fetish on there. I have several Serenity Explorer. I see nothing with fetish as of right now on any of my cards. So my side quest of the Habits and Customs is still going to be something I can't really actually do anything with. And man, I would really like... I don't know if I've actually ever finished an actual green side quest card that I've drawn in this game. Um... So we have a couple actions that we can do on here. We can do a search or examine. And we also have, I think, a spot or observe down there. Let's do the search or examine because that one actually costs nothing. And that's going to get us the 16 card. There is something in there. Following the scampering crab, you notice a gleam at the entrance to the hole. You crouch down and reach into the hole to take the object. Oh, we found the metal gear wheel. So I think we found another metal gear wheel over on this body over here, if I remember correctly. But like I said, I don't really think we're just going to throw that under our satchel here. I don't really think, and I kind of forgot to do something. Although, I just noticed there is red seaweed thank God, on this part of the island as well. So we have the actual vine resource. I want to craft the woven basket. Um, I wish we had some some of the trees here, some of the tree icons um, or the leaf icons to basically be able to craft this for free. We don't. Um, I'm going to do the spot or observe action one more time and draw the next 16 card that is in the box. And I think that is a gold card. You insert your arm into the hole, uh, but find nothing worthwhile. Dun, dun, dun. You notice that the ground around the tunnel is loose and crumbling. You could easily dig it out and hide in there. All right, so I think one of the next things we're going to do is we 
we're going to, I guess let's craft the woven basket just to get that in our inventory. In case if we do find some food, we can start stacking food under it. Although if we do find something else good, um, I think that might be a, the best thing for us to do is to craft this woven basket and just be prepared, especially since we're on an, a part of the island where we can get a discount on the crafting because it normally costs three. It'll cost us two to craft the woven basket right now, being where we are. Before we do that, let's actually, um, let's actually Pathfinder explore or escape and flip this card over and see what's here. Sea urchins. Ah, this is another balanced one. I hate this one. The ground is covered with hundreds of little reddish creatures that look like sea urchins. Uh, you have to tiptoe through the colony if you want to continue this way. Each character getting involved in the following action may discard any number of cards, the keyword skill, from their hand and or inventory for each card discarded this way. You get a star during the result step. You make it through unharmed, discard this. A spike will painfully um, go through your heel if you don't um, fail that. So I think what we're going to do is do our... see this card real quick yeah all right that doesn't need to be taken immediately so I think what we're going to do is we're going to build a woven basket it's going to cost us two cards to be able to build that and we're going to put that in our inventory so our two cards are a friction fire and a camouflage outfit The fire may come into play here soon if I get to the next part of the island. I don't know if I've ever needed the camouflage outfit before. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to keep the friction fire. Um, if we can hopefully get off this part of the island here in the next couple of cards, um, when we move to the next part of the continent, we will um, do a fire right away on that first spot so we can move back to there quick and easy. We have four cards in our hand. Four items in our inventory. We're stacking actual up like we did last time, which is definitely the way to go. Um, and I think what we're ready to do is do the spot or observe action down here, which is going to cost us a card. Think. Randomly take up to seven cards from the action deck. You may add one card to your hand and must shuffle the other cards back into the action deck. And or discard pile you choose for each card. Discard this. So this will be the fifth card in my hand, actually. So probably not going to be doing that anytime soon. Although it is free to do. And I can use that card to free something up and actually pick something out of those top seven cards. Hmm. Before we do that, let's go ahead and pull out the 012 card, which is what needs to go there. Let's finish one action before we start another. From the few tracks you spot on the ground, it seems that a small animal was recently here. Um, and this is going to be a hunting card. You hide and wait in silence. Um, so that's a good time that we just got that basket. That's going to go right down here. Let's go ahead and take this... Um, Let's utilize this think card right now, since it actually does cost nothing. Let's try to use some of these. I've never really used all of these cards and tried some of these different things before, so let's see what we get. Uh, we can take seven cards from the action deck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we can add one card to our hand and must shuffle the other cards back into the action deck and or discard pile. I don't know why you'd want to put any of these into the discard pile. Um, because you kind of just be going through your life that way. So I'm not too sure why that would be a choice. Um, War paint. There's a couple of curses in here. And there's a torch. And forearmed is forewarned. Forewarned is forearmed. 
I can discard that card to actually get a star, which may help during combat. So we're going to put these cards back in here, and it says to shuffle these cards uh, back up. So we're going to go ahead and shuffle our deck here. And then we're probably going to go hunting, I think is what we're going to do. And grab some food. Now for hunting, we need as many stars as we can get. I want to look something up in the rolls real quick. When I'm activating my spiky conch, I believe I get to utilize the brown car, the brown weapon symbol from both cards if I am remembering the rules correctly. I want to do a quick rules check on this before we actually get to that, um, get to doing this. So let's double check that real quick and see what happens when we're activating that. I just want to do a quick, make sure I'm using that. Relinquish and I'm using an item. Player may use an item in their inventory by lowering its durability, either to apply some or all of the item's effects when they are involved in a white action to which the item's brown action effects apply. Using an item enables the player to freely choose to apply some or all of the effects of one or more item cards it consists of. So yeah, I will get to actually utilize that, um, that weapon. Interesting. So actually, you can stack multiple weapons then. Uh, thanks, Kimmy, for letting me know if things are still sounding good. So I could, like, I could have used the, um, oh, this is, oh, see, now this is where we're going to run into a little bit of a snag because I believe the action we need to take here is with a ranged weapon, and it appears we only have melee weapons. I just noticed that one of the things I probably had in my hand before were these bolas, which was actually, um... So yeah, I can't even get that food right now. Huh. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting, because if we get two to three stars, I can get a star there. I really have nothing else to give me more stars. I completely was not paying attention that this was going to be a hunt action and not an actual fight action. So the hunt action is more like a bullseye symbol, which I actually don't have any bullseye symbols on anything I had. And that card that I just drew probably should have been the bolas that I actually kept to add to my spiky conch here to give me that um, ability there to be able to use. Because now it's going to be very difficult for me to get um, more than one food card. Um, but I think we're still just going to have to do it and just actually take the food. All right. All right, all right, all right. So we're going to have to do, do the hunt action. I don't know why I set that card back down. I guess I should have kept that over here since we're actually doing this action. Depending on the number of successes you obtain, take the corresponding number of 030 cards. Well, we're probably not going to get multiple ones here. We draw two cards, and it has a lock symbol on there, so I can't draw more than two. That think card should have gone away a few seconds ago. I forgot to do that. Oh, I can't believe I didn't realize that that was the hunt symbol. And I was thinking I was all set for a fight with a shitload of stars. Man, made a little mistake there on that one. Definitely going to need to pay attention to those symbols a little closer. All right, we have to draw two cards. We always have the forewarned as forearmed to give us a free star. Let's see what we get. There is two stars. There's really no reason to throw in the forewarned is forearmed because that will give us three and two to three is one 30 card. I would have had to have gotten up to four. Um, I have half a card here, but nothing matches to it. So it looks like we're only getting one 030 card, which really, 
really kind of sucks right there. I was hoping to get way more food than that. Oh, and instead of getting food, we have a strange cephalopod. Now we have a fight on our hands. Okay, so we reveal them. If at least one involved character is bloody, you must discard one of these cards. If you were predatory, choose one of the remaining cards, which represents the result of your hunt. Return the other cards. And this one goes into the past. And we go to 12, the gold card of 12. which is apparently there is not much more food in this desolate land than you have already found. You realize you had better ration what you have if you want to make it, though. Immediately after this card is revealed, each character may discard two cards from their hand and choose one card in the discard pile to add it to their hand. Um, I don't think we're going to have to do that. This is going to go here. Uh, but we now have a fight on our hands with the cephalopod. Um, we have to draw one card, and we need two stars. We're going to use our Spiky Conk, which is going to give us way more than enough cards um, to kill it. What is the timing for items? All involved characters must choose their items, less the durability of each item used by one. So I have to... So during action resolution, item usage is first. So I can't draw my card and then choose to use an item or not. We're going to have to use the item first. So we're definitely going to use this because we don't want to get messed up here. So we're going to drop this down to a five, which is going to be more than enough to kill it. So this card hopefully is a free card. It's a curse. No big deal. Um, that's just going to get discarded because we have more than enough than two stars to kill it because we have one there. We have two and a seven. So we have three actual stars. We only need a two. We kill the little critter and get an O2 card. And we found a fish mollusk. Um, so we're actually going to add this to our... Um, and what this does is it lets us take the um, eat action, I think is what it is. I don't know if I've actually really ever looked up this symbol before for eating. Yeah, eat or drink. Um, we can randomly take four cards, five if we're on a spot with fire resource, um, from the discard pile and shuffle them back into the action deck, and then this gets returned to the box. This is where I was making my mistake last week. Um, we're going to put this with our um, woven basket here, which is actually going to up the woven basket by two, or by one, and take that down to a two. Uh, so whenever we take this action of this food action, we'd have to lower the woven basket by one, which would still um, let it be in our inventory, but um, it will then allow us to get some food back. So I think we need to go over here by these sea urchins, deal with them, and that's how we're going to get off of this part of the island. Um, We'll definitely wait to eat the food uh, because I definitely want to do that by fire to get that extra card back, and we really don't need to do it right now. So I think what we need to do is we need to kind of deal with the sea urchin and deal with a little balance and jump action going on here. Um, we did kill this guy. He is going to go over here into the past. And let's deal with our sea urchins right now. Now, the one thing I'm not too certain of, this card that I have over here actually had the brown hunt symbol on there with the star. I wonder if that actually added one more to my thing. And I wonder if I could have gotten two actual, if I would have gotten rid of that forewarned is forearmed. I'm going to have to definitely check that up as a rule check. Um, if there's a card that's attached to you that actually has a symbol on there, if you can actually utilize that um, on the card you're on. I'm going to write this down and actually do a check on that. Gold 16 and double check a rolling on that. Let's write that down here. Gold 16. Check. 
how to use. Because I wonder if that could have gotten me an extra food, actually, because there's a, there's a hunt symbol there, and I wonder if that's why that's there, is because the hunt symbol that's below there where you're getting your food from. That may be the way that's supposed to be played, and I may not realize that. So I'm going to have to double-check that up. I'm not going to look that up right now uh, to slow down the game. I'll look that up later. Um, and I will just know then for the next time, and you guys will know then as well. Uh, but for right now, we're going to do a balance um, ability. We need to draw at least one card. Um, we need two stars. Um, we have one star over here. If it's a curse, we can get rid of a card. Um, I wonder if we should take one or two cards here. I want to do one card, try to play it a little safer, and see what happens. We got a star. Um, we're then going to go ahead and use our forewarned is forearmed to give us a second star and get by that. That will allow us to put the pan pipes into our... Um, into our inventory. And I just noticed something with the pan pipes. They are musical. And my conch shell is musical. So I can actually build them for free right now because there's bamboo on this tile. Let's, okay, one thing at a time, one thing at a time. Let's get through this card first. But we're gonna get, get back to that very quickly here. So the sea urchins, um, you made it through unharmed, discard this. Uh, so we now draw out a, um, a zero, zero, 004 card. Oh, how did that card get there? That card was out of place. And, oh, that's eight. We want four. Yes, four is what we want. Okay, here's another part of the island. I think this might be how we can kind of launch from here. Because that looks like it's a dead end. So, Right where I'm at right now, though, we don't need to put on any other cards. Uh, we do need to craft the pan pipes. The pan pipes, we are on a bamboo square for a resource. Um, bamboo um, for the pan pipes is minus two. And we also have the seaweed here, which gives us the vine resource, which is minus three total. It's normally three cards. This is free to craft. We're going to add this to our spiky conch um, to actually bump back up our weapons to six. So I think this is one of the first times I actually have a, a crafting area that has three cards in it. I don't know if I actually have really crafted that much before. Uh, next thing we're going to do is actually move over to here, which is going to cost us two cards. We have Dark Whispers, and Knowledge is Power. You get more experience. Take one zero zero three card for each Knowledge is Power card in the hands of all involved characters. Take one additional card, discard this. I think I'm going to keep Dark Whispers because Dark Whispers is an HP Lovecraft card. Those are usually a little bit more powerful. We're going to get rid of Knowledge is Power. That was our movement. And now we can start doing a couple of actions on this particular card. We have a Spot or Observe action here, which is the 035 card. You find a moss carpeted hovel where you can get some rest and comfort away from the elements. Hmm, this is newer. I don't remember having this card before. Unfortunately, just as soon as you settle in, you awaken thousands of little insects which begin to swarm around your face and cling to your clothes and hair. Um, during the cost step of the craft and move action, you must draw two additional cards. Um, I could do a, um, what is this? I think this is a hide or, it's the little mask symbol. The little mask symbol is be stealthy or hide um, to discard this. Wow, that kind of sucks. Wasn't expecting that. Well, luckily I don't think we're crafting anything here. And I don't know if we're actually going to move off of this. 
So we'll let that card sit there. Uh, next, we're going to do the Explore, which is our little map, or Go See and Investigate, which is card 008. Um, you gaze upon the wide, endless ocean. The surf is rough and choppy, and the salty spray from the waves is enough to tell you that the water is freezing. Swimming away would certainly not be easy. On the other hand, if you stay here for more than a few days, you will likely die. Um, and this is how we got off of the island the last time, by doing a sail action. Now, we do need... We need nine stars for this. That's kind of a lot. I could use the life jacket and the raft both, which would give me... Three stars right there. Don't think I have anything else that's going to help me with that. That would give me three stars. But man, getting nine, that is kind of insane. And I did this the last time, and I think I just drew like six cards, which I think is what we're probably going to do again. Because even though I can get, get this for free, it's getting that stars up to nine. Uh, that is kind of the tricky part here. And I wish there was some bonus that they, I, the, the raft should give you more stars for this. That's kind of, I have to say, kind of disappointing. And I don't want to fail at this because we have to get to the second part of the island and move on. Well, we're going to have to just attempt it. So we said we had... I'm trying to see if I have anything that's going to give me any other bonuses. I don't think so. I think we're just going to have to draw the six cards. I'm going to use the life jacket and take it down to five. I'm going to use the raft, take it down to three. Because uh, you can use multiple items. That's going to give me the stars that are on here for the um, swimming action or for the for the actual sailing action. And we're just going to draw six cards and cross our fingers here and see what happens. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's two stars, one and a half stars. There's a curse. There's a couple more stars, or there's one more star built there. There's a star with a shovel, and then a half a star here. So we got two, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there were no sevens in that. As of right now, we are one short. We're at eight. So I don't want to have to do this, but we're going to. HP Lovecraft's ability, since we did draw a curse, since we did draw the curse, his ability is to discard one card with the keyword Serenity from your hand. And I'm seeing which one I want to actually discard. I have Dark Whispers or Dark Regeneration. I think we're going to get rid of Dark Regeneration for the Serenity. I can discard this. To get a star. Which is going to give me my nine stars. To actually succeed at this um, sailing action right here. So now we have a choice. We have several cards here that we now get a choice, or we have to choose from. We have the shovel. We have a bow, which would be nice. And we have the imaginary friend. The imaginary friend um, kind of goes along with Dark Whispers. It gives him a minus one to certain actions and or a star and a seven, which is nice. 
but that kind of some of that overlaps on onto the dark whispers card and it's an actual um you have to craft it so i don't know if i want to take that i think the bow may be the right thing to take here because that would maybe let me stack that with a spiky conch and actually give me um some some items for hunting Although, well, I can't stack it there. I take that back. It is a will card. And... Ooh. I don't have anything in any of my inventory stacks with the keyword will. That kind of stinks. So I won't be able to stack that. I could take the war paint, which would give me a seven. Uh, that may be the thing to take, although the shovel might not be that bad either. Well, the shovel's for fighting. The shovel would save me when I'm doing a dig action, but war paint would help me when I'm hunting. It would give me the sevens. I haven't seen too many sevens come up in our game so far. I've never done the war paint. So war paint's aggressiveness, which would fit in with the spiky conch. The shovel stamina, which would fit in with my food in my woven basket. I think we're going to take the war paint and put it into the spiky conch when we build it. That's going to be our fifth card we throw into our hand. Or do I want to or do I want to take remember and play that immediately? Choose one card in the discard pile and add it to your hand. That may be the thing to do, because I think there might be some good cards in that um, in there overtaking the war paint. We're gonna do that. So that remember was the card that I took, and I'm gonna use that probably almost immediately. Um, since our raft does have a plus five to it on here. We are going to add five to the card of 23 that we take, and we need to take card 28 then. You launch the craft and pull away from the islet. After navigating for many hours, you are finally able to make out the wild coast of the seventh continent ahead on the horizon. Take two, zero, zero, three cards. Take two zero zero three cards. Experience points. Those go under our satchel. Still have yet to even use any ever experience points. I've never made it to the part where it says use experience points. Um, put um, return all the cards on the board and into the past, and then put card one twenty five into play. Card 125 is going to come into play. And all of these cards will then need to go away um, and go back into the box. Well, everything in the past goes, it's going to go back in there. This card is going to go there so we need to pick up all of these cards take our figure and we did see a couple of new cards I don't think that the card for um, that we had down here for these insects I don't know if I've actually ever seen that one before but um, I think right now um, before we start exploring the second part of the island, I think we're going to stop right here and call this a stream for today. Um, I think I've been going for probably about a good hour and a half or so, I think right now. And I think if I start to explore um, this part of the land, uh, we're going to be another hour and a half. Um, 
So I think we're right now, since we made it to the second part, we have a good, a good hand of cards. We have a good group of items. I think this would be a good place to stop since we are on the second part. They kind of say you should play the game in one to two hour increments, mainly because of um, the save aspect to the game. And when you do the save aspect to the game, you're pretty much clearing the board, kind of like what we, what we just did by sailing off the land and kind of like resetting the cards. And then when you put those cards back out, they will be different cards available to you that you'll be able to see. So um, it kind of moves the game along into a way that uh, you're going to be experiencing and seeing different things and and make the island a little bit more like like it's a living island and like things are changing and as you come back to areas that you were at before uh, maybe there's creatures or something has shown up there that wasn't there before because certain amount of time has passed so it gives it a little bit more realistic of a feel um, time wise to the game I think um, and the other thing I really want to do is look up this 016 card and seeing if I could have actually used that um, 016 card to help with the hunt because I want to know that going forward if I do run into something like that again. So I think right now we're going to call this it for our revisiting of the Seventh Continent, um, part one of our stream. Uh, last week I had mentioned I would try to do some streaming during the week. Uh, with my work schedule, it's really hard to do um, streaming during the week. If I do, I may try again, but if not, um, next Saturday I'll be back for sure, and we will hit part two in the second part of the continent and see where we can get, hopefully, get some fire put down, get some of these cards put back into our deck. We're not even halfway through, so we definitely need to find some more food. We didn't get a lot of food on that first part of the island. I really wish I would have found more food. That could be something that hinders us, and... Um, maybe not gets us past next week um, when we attempt this again um, to where we restart. But um, I think we're going to call this a stream for everybody. Thank you for stopping in and saying hi and watching. Um, I'll get this edited and uploaded to YouTube. So check out youtube.com slash what I'm playing now um, for this video to be up there. If you are just stopping in and watching now, um, hopefully going to maybe try to do a podcast tomorrow. And Kim and I are working on uh, doing a video for a call to adventure. Uh, the newer game by Brotherwise Games. So we should have hopefully a video up for that shortly as well. But until then, everybody, hey, you know what to do. Go play some games and don't forget to let me know what you're playing now. But until then, everybody, hey, thanks for joining me and we will catch you later. Bye-bye.